Hey folks, in this video I want to run through some of the disappointments of the Z8. Now, I did this video, something like this, on the Z9 back in the day, and I own two of them. It's not to say that it's a bad camera. You saw, I hope, my initial review. I'll put links to the playlist in the video above below somewhere. Um, it truly is a mini Z9 with some new features, some slight limitations, but in a great form factor. But a couple of weeks ago, before I had any inside info on this, I made a video running through the things, you know, discussing the three different ways I thought they could possibly go with the camera and my wish list for features versus the Z9 given 18 months or so have passed between the two. So I think it's only fair to revisit that list and let's see how many of them were actually approved and how many weren't. So let's start off with the half and half. So the sensor, I had personally not really cared about, I, I guess they were going to high res, so I was wrong, but I had personally hoped that it would stay 40 to 50 megapixels, but improve in ISO. So it stayed in that range because it's exactly the same sensor, so there's no improvement in ISO. So the resolution, yes, the ISO, no. Uh, the autofocus, I, it's half and half because I partly worried that they would dumb it down a little bit, being the little brother, and I really optimistically hoped that they may actually improve on the Z9 because, again, 18 months have passed. Other companies have, you know, new flagship products out as well. It's exactly the same again. So they didn't dumb it down. They didn't advance it. It's where we were. So those are two kind ofs. Um, in terms of, well, let's go with the nose first. The things that I was hoping for that we didn't see. I was really hoping for an upgrade in the EVF. The Z9 one is fine, it's bright, it's fast, it's responsive, but it's not super high res. Given some of the others on the market, I was hoping we would see an eight or nine uh, megapixel, whatever the terminology is. It's the same as the previous one, but all of these are gonna come back to it. It's the same as the previous one. Uh, the LCD, I was also hoping would articulate further. It's articulating just the same amount as the Z9. So for some shooting, it's great. Uh, as long as you have it in the right orientation, you're fine. But if you needed for some reason to be shooting in the other orientation, you can't articulate it all the way up. The battery, I, I just made this up, but I was vainly hoping that if they stuck with the same form factor, we might see an ENEL 15D, a newer generation of battery with a higher charge. This actually should probably be in the half addressed camp. It's still an ENEL 15C, but as I covered in my first video, you're getting thousands and thousands and thousands of images on a single charge when you're shooting sports, so not such a big deal after all. The port covers. I was really hoping we would see more individual port covers, although seeing that the Z9 doesn't, going to a lower model it was probably not to be expected. It's still two doors to cover everything, but the way that they've switched to having two uh, USB-C ports instead of having the Ethernet port there, I think is quite nice and does overall help with the, the weather sealing because you aren't going to have crazy things exposed when you're trying to like put in a HDMI, that kind of thing. I was also really hoping that we would see a locking card door. Now, we don't. It's just like the Z6, Z7. I think it's slightly less likely to bump open because the curve isn't as pronounced. So if it's like going past your hip, it's not as likely to get caught and bump open. It's, you have to be more intentional with it, but no actual lock. But then when I was looking at like the D850, which no one had any complaints about the build quality from 2017, it also doesn't have a locking card door. You have to go back to like, I don't know, I can't even think of which one, but some of the older ones I think did. And finally, the cards themselves. I was really hoping that I was finally done with SD UHS 2 cards and that I could just go all in on CF Express Type B. Unfortunately, this is going like the Z6 and Z7 series with one CF Express B and one UHS 2 card slot. It's, it is what it is. It does mean that if you were trying to do raw to both cards, it's going to limit you shooting in high frames per second. I know a lot of people, especially like people who've been shooting for, you know, 5, 10, 15 years have a mountain of SD cards, so they'll probably be really happy not to have to reinvest in a new card format. But personally, I much prefer CF Express B, so that's a disappointment for me. Now, 
Four things where they hit it out of the park and my wishes were granted. Price, I was hoping that we would see it come in at around 4,000 or below, and we did see that. I've talked about this in the other videos as well. It's a higher percentage of the price of a Z9 when you compare it to like a D850 to a D5 or a D700 to a D3, but that's mainly because the Z9 has come down a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars from what you would expect them to be charging in 2023. Not that this has been overpriced, adjusted for inflation. This is pretty much the same price as the D850 was in 2017. The sensor cover, being that it has everything the same, yes, it still has the sensor cover on there, which I love. Really glad to see that still included. The ceiling. Yes, it is a step up from the Z6 and Z7. They're saying that it's on par with the D850. And seeing I took that to the deserts of Mongolia, on everywhere, to frozen lake festivals, minus 40, plus 50, all kinds of different sandstorms, and I never had a problem with my D850. If this is at that same level, then I have no complaints at all about the ceiling. And finally, video. My hope was that they would maintain 8K 30 and 4K 120, if, even if they gave up the 8K RAW formats, that would be fine. And that I was hoping for an extended recording time, but would accept that in a smaller body, it won't be the two hours and five minutes that you get on the Z9. But again, specification-wise, they've actually copied it. Here we are again, jumping in. I am now actually editing. This is after the camera has been launched. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm home with COVID, which ironically, I actually caught filming these Z8 videos. Have to point out, Actually, the video specs, I think, need to go back into the kind of satisfied category, not the hit it out of the park. On paper, yes, it's capable of all of them. The back of camera shows you 125 minutes for the different formats, but they're just not capable of it. They overheat before they get there in the high bit rate, the high frames per second, and then the 8K formats you're not going to get the same recording time out of them as the Z9. Pretty much only 4K60 in 8-bit non-oversampled are you going to, in the right conditions, get a full two hours worth. But even doing something like, I don't know, 4K120 or 10-bit and maybe turning oversampling on, you're going to find that it overheats and that your either the card or the camera gives up. Whereas on the Z9, that just never ever happens. So as a video option, it's not at the level I was hoping for personally. There is however one thing that I forgot in my initial list that I was hoping the Z8 would have, and it does, so let's add that in on a positive note. It does have illuminated buttons, so that's really great to see. Now, if catching COVID for the first time uh, whilst covering Nikon equipment for you all doesn't show dedication to the cause, I don't know what will. So do me a favor, if you're also a Nikon shooter, please consider grabbing my Nikon Z setup guide. It runs for over eight hours. It's really comprehensive and takes you through every camera in the system. I won't go through every detail again because I'm exhausted, but it will help you get the most out of your cameras. Let's jump back into the main video. So that's my overall top line on it. Um, I thought it's only fair having put out several different videos here about all the great things that this camera is bringing to the market to address that out of my wish list of whatever that was, 12 or 15 items, less than half were a yes. Still a fantastic camera, but not everything that I was personally hoping for. Let me know your thoughts. Did it address what you were hoping to get from it? Are you planning to order one? If you do, I'd appreciate it if you use my affiliate links below, of course. And any questions that you might have, let me know below. I'll see you guys soon.